Kamayaka Middle School is a great school of about 600 kids. It serves a very diverse community. We serve kids that are our highest, most talented learners uh, in our Quest program, and we also serve students that are brand new to the country. Kamayaka Middle School, it's a great school. We have a great community, great staff. What I love about Kamayaka is its community. Like, you know everyone really well even with like 600 students around. And what's wonderful about that is our kids have really come together to form a community themselves even though they have a lot of differences. Sometimes I think the building doesn't support all of the people quite as well as we might need it to be. Our building is from I believe 1975 was the grand opening of it and when you first walk up to the building it kind of looks like a bunker. Like, what is the property of that sound? Facility wise, you know, Kamaikan was really built for the educational model of the 1960s and 70s. Hallways I think are the biggest struggle. They're really small and we have lockers but we can't use them. <laughs> Our school was built for 400 students and we have over 650. So it doesn't quite work quite as well as we'd like. We are serving about a third of our students in portables. So we have seven portables, that's 210 kids that get served each period in those portables. And there is one doorway that all those kids come in and out of um, each period. I work in a portable classroom. When it gets warm out, it's very difficult to have adequate ventilation in there. And so it becomes a really stuffy, hot environment, which is challenging for students. Um, and challenging for me. It gets really humid and like stuffy in the portables because there's not like a lot of ventilation and when it rains the building kind of just like absorbs all the water and it gets like a smell afterwards. Our classrooms were wired for the power needs of a school in 1970. No computers, no technology. The technology was a chalkboard, right? And so now our power systems are stressed. So there are literally science labs that we are really unable to do because they trip the power breakers when we need to like literally heat some water so we can see phase change take place. That's not something we can do. We have to have teachers trade classrooms so that we get into a classroom we, where we know the power won't trip. Our Wi-Fi, like, it'll go down. The power's been out, I think, like three times this year. And like, if you plug two fans into the wall, like the whole power will go out and our rooms get super hot. Like the ones on the outside get really cold and the ones on the inside get super hot. Respuestas. And it's just really uncomfortable. So technology, like smart boards usually don't work as smoothly as teachers want them to. In my current room, it's not really a proper classroom. It is half of the auditorium that has been divided with an accordion style divider. So we can hear what's happening in the next classroom over. And because it's auditorium seating, although it's great to have all that space, I cannot walk through desks to support students. We need a 21st century building for 21st century learning so our students can have a better chance of success in their future. I'm really proud to be at Kamayaka Middle School. I know for performing arts, band and orchestra specifically, provide a place for students to feel part of a community and feel like they belong. We have outgrown our space. In the band and orchestra room, because um, orchestra, concert band, and wind ensemble are third, fourth, and fifth period right after each other, you have to wait for the other class to come all out before you can go in since it's only one hallway and there's other rooms there, you have to be quiet. Our Quest program pulls kids in from all over the district. So we have a lot of parent traffic and our parking lot was set up for a few parents to arrive and drop off students. So we have a huge traffic issue. There's really not a, an appropriate student drop off space. It causes some student uh, automobile conflicts. So we're always, we always have to be outside and present to make sure kids are staying safe. We're gonna check out how ice happens. And today's kind of thinking is we really want to challenge kids with really high level thinking. We want them to be inventing things, we want them to be analyzing things, and really problem solving some tough problems. We also want them to be working collaboratively. And our kids are resilient, they're tough, they're problem solvers. They power through it and they, they learn in a cold classroom. And I don't hear complaints about it. 
but when I walk into a classroom that's below temperature, I know that it's a small barrier. And when you, when you start st stacking small barrier on small barrier, it creates, a, it creates a real learning issue for kids.